In a recent video, I covered the new community proposed format for Angular components that might be made available through Analog.js. This video isn't about that, but rather on a technical level, how someone from the community can just go and fundamentally change what Angular components look like. This sounds like a massive undertaking, but it seems they were able to complete this work pretty quickly. It's easy to assume this sort of thing is just beyond your own abilities, and maybe it is right now, but this is the great thing about open source software. We can see exactly how it is done. In fact, the initial implementation of this functionality is contained entirely within this one pull request. There is some complex stuff going on here, but if we really break it down to the key parts, there is a reasonably small amount of information to digest and learn from. If you spend some time just reading through this PR, which I think is a good first step, you might eventually be able to notice that the TS morph package is being used to take everything supplied in the new format and convert them to their equivalent in the existing format. The key idea here is that the new style of Angular component is just being converted into a standard Angular component. Essentially, we get a string representation of the file in the new format, and we convert that string into another string that adheres to the existing format. But it's one thing to look at this PR at a high level and have a vague understanding of what is going on. It is another to actually absorb something useful from this. I think there is value in just reading a pull request, but it is far more valuable to actually take the concept and build something yourself. So let's see if we can do that by creating a little demo of our own. We are going to try and replicate the same basic idea in a simplified way. Let's start by creating a new project with npm, installing TypeScript and running tsc init. This will allow us to create an index.ts file with whatever code we want to run. We can transpile it by running tsc, and then we can just run the resulting index.js file with node. So first, let's create an example.ng file to convert. This is an example of the proposed new format, and we are going to see if we can transform this into a standard Angular component. To do that, we know we are going to need the tsmorph package as well, or at least that's how Chow did it in the PR. So let's install that now along with the types for node so that we can read in the string of text from our example file. As you can see here, we can use read file sync to capture the data from that example file, and now we can work with it in a programmatic way. The next thing we need to deal with is to separate out the parts of this string we have just loaded from our .ng file. We want to handle the script, template, and style sections separately. Each of these sections are surrounded in a script, template, or style tag, so we can pull out these separate sections by using these regular expressions from the PR. We use those to match against our string, and then we can store those three separate sections in these variables. If we log those out now, we can see we have each section stored separately. Next, we can focus on creating our regular Angular component. To start, we can just create a simple string that represents a standard class-based Angular component, and for the template and styles, we can just drop those directly into where they need to be. If we log out the resulting string, we can see that the template and style from our .ng format are now where they should be in the standard Angular format. Things get a little harder for the script section though. We can't just dump all of it in one location. First of all, the import statement and the variable declaration would be in two separate places. One would be within the components class and the other would be above it. But there's also the matter of how we even figure out which parts of the string from our script section represent an import and which represent a variable declaration. And on top of that, it's still not a matter of just placing them individually in the correct place in the target Angular component. In the case of the variable declaration, it can't just be added directly to the class and be declared with const, it needs to be created as a class member. This is where tsmorph comes into play. It can help us figure out what the parts of our script string actually are, and it can help us add them appropriately to our target Angular component. What we can do with tsmorph is create a project, and then we add a source file both for the script content we are trying to convert and the target Angular component. We can then get those source files from the project and call all sorts of helper functions on them. You can see here, for example, that I can easily loop through every node from our script source file and call the print helper to print out the text for that node. What we are going to do is loop through each node from our script section, and for each node, we are going to figure out how it should be added to the target Angular component. Our import declaration is quite easy. We can check if the current node is an import declaration, and if it is, we call the add import declaration helper on our target file to add the import declaration. If we log out our resulting Angular component, now you can see our import has been added. There is one more case we need to handle for our scenario though, and that is a variable statement like this const declaration here. For this, we are going to need to get a reference to the class from our target source file, which we can do like this. 
Now we can just add an extra if statement that checks if the current node from the script section is a variable statement. And if it is, we call the add property helper on the class reference to add the variable from the script section as a class member on our target Angular component. If we log the resulting string, we can indeed see that this has been added to the class. And now we're done. We've successfully converted this custom Angular component format into a standard Angular component that we can actually use. Of course, this is an oversimplified example. There are many more scenarios we would need to handle. We've only handled the specific cases our example.ng file needs, which is an import declaration and a variable statement. There is also far more required to actually get all of this working properly within Analog.js in a way that developers can realistically build with it. But this is the basic idea and I think the key bit of knowledge to be gained from this PR. So if I can provide a main takeaway for this video is that if you ever see something cool or complex someone is doing, don't just assume it's beyond your skill level. Open up the PR and see what you can learn from it. You might find it's more approachable than you initially think. And even if it's not, it's a safer long-term bet on your education to assume you might be able to do something and be wrong than to assume you can't. If you like this video, please consider dropping a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here again.